First of all, thank you for all of your questions. We had an amazing response this month and I read every single question. I wish I could answer them all. Um, but for now, I'm going to answer Miss Williams' question. She wants to know how, besides prayer, could Christians in America and around the world help Israel and the Jewish people? And this is a question that I deal with every single day in my work with the fellowship. From the time I was young, my father, Rabbi Eckstein, raised me on this notion that Christians love Israel and the Jewish people. And finally, for the first time in history, we're not alone. And it's something that I believe. It's what I've seen is that there are millions of Christians who don't want to change the Jewish people, who just want to love and respect and bless the Jewish people, and they want nothing in return. And so that's my mission here in Israel, to let the Jewish people know that we're not alone. Very often when we turn on the radio and the television and the internet, we feel like we're alone because the whole world is against us. And what I hear within the Christian community is a voice for freedom and justice and the values of voice for Israel. And so what are some ways that you could let the Jewish people know that they're not alone? What are some ways that you could bless Israel as uh, God tells us to do in Genesis 12, 3? He promises that he will bless those that blesses his people, Israel. And so there are a few ways that I could suggest to you. One is to continue with your prayers. I believe that prayer is the greatest weapon. And when we have millions of Jews and Christians and all different people around the world praying for Israel and the peace and security of Israel, God hears those prayers. So continue praying because I know the guardian of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. And he's waiting for us to call on him to do that. The second thing you could do is tangible aid. When I go out to elderly and bring them heating checks and fuel for the winter and heaters to keep them warm. When I go out to orphans and bring them homes. When I go out to soldiers and single mothers and bring them life-saving aid, I tell them it's on behalf of Christians around the world who love them. And only then do they really realize, wow, the Christian community is different. They don't want to change us. They don't want to do anything bad to us. They simply want to bless us and they want nothing in return. And so, so many people here in Israel are awakening that Christians are our friends to this historic and prophetic idea that the Jewish people aren't alone and that Christians are here in the vision of the Bible to bless the Jewish people to clothe the naked, to shelter the poor, to feed the hungry. That's what the fellowship is doing on your behalf, on behalf of Christians and Jews. And so when we work together, we really let the Jewish people in Israel and the former Soviet Union and in Ethiopia around the world know that they're not alone. There are Christians and Jews who are here together to help them. And the third thing that I could suggest is that you lift up your voice for Israel. Be a voice of truth. Be a voice of justice. Let your friends know that you stand with Israel. Let the local newspapers know that you stand for Israel. Write to Congress. Write, write to the President. Do everything you can to make sure that Israel has a voice. A voice of reason, a voice of hope, and a voice of justice. And you could be that voice. So. Thank you for caring so much about Israel, about Israel's security, about the Jewish people. Thank you for enabling the Psalm 133 to come to life. Hine matov shevet achim gam yachad. How good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in peace. And I bless you to have the strength and the vision and the knowledge to do everything you can to help bless the Jewish people. Because right now, there are very few people doing that. We're relying on you. So God bless you and see you soon. From here in Israel, this is Yael.